Hey guys, what's up? This is Shark Talking. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is about Romancing Saga Universe, and we will be checking the schools banner. Yeah, we have a Romancing Festival now. This is how they call their seasonal events, and four new styles for you to summon for. We already summoned it in my uh, past live stream that happened yesterday. I already got all these characters. Uh, there are some very good things to talk about these characters. That's why I'm making this video. Let's just click here on summon details so we can check the null. The first one is SS Hyundin, and just like I mentioned in my past videos, this version of Hyundin is uh, the first character that was changed for Global. Not only Hyundin, but also Volcano. They have some different passives, and Hyundin even has a different first skill. Ice Javelins is different than uh, it is on the Japanese version of the game. Ice Javelins is here an AoE spell with E power and 5 BP coast. On the Japanese version of the game, it's a C power, 5 BP coast as well, but instead of AoE, it's a single target damage spell. The elements do the same code. And this kind of affects everything, because Ice Javelins, the global version, also can reduce the target's endurance of AoE. So that happens with um, inflicting more damage. You can also use um, Ice Javelins to start the wave and then use uh, a character that uses an AoE that's based on physical damage because uh, if you reduce the endurance of the enemy, your physical skill will do more damage. So she opens and then comes another character that uses more damage because of your Yundin. That's amazing by itself and also uh, we don't have many characters that have sh access to sheep. Uh, spells that hits AoE enemies. That's a problem with this game because some characters have so some skills that are so costly, like 15 BP to be able to do AoE. That's kind of prohibitive. It's bad for farming. It's bad for lots of situations. You barely use those skills that uses 15 BP. Nah, the, the that's just too much. You only have 15 BP on the third turn, and that sometimes it's not good to wait so much. And SS Yundin is amazing because of Ice Javelins, yes. She's even better because of the buff to her abilities, yes. Is she worth summoning for? Well, we need to talk about everything. But yes and no. Mostly yes. Yeah, uh, besides Ice Javelins, let's check other stuff here on Trial. Well, uh, let me talk a little more about why Yundin was so used on the Japanese version of the game. Some people... Uh, on Global and still talks about Hyundin being useful. A lot of people were using her as style. Some people just because they like uh, the character. Some people were using her on the Forest uh, of Mystery facing the snake because the snake is weak to cold. Um, some people just wanted to use an AoE uh, damage dealer that had a spell that's not so costly. She has a uh, Squall on her as style that uses 7 VP, can be reduced to 6 and can help farm, uh, especially on the start of the game. Right now we have more options. Uh, but Yundini was also useful because if you were using her S style, you can inherit Water of Life from her A style, and then she will become a healer and damage dealer from Cold Element. We don't have many characters that have, uh, deal Cold damage. And then um, on the Japanese version of the game, they didn't have Sophia. She was not free. You had to summon her with your um, Spiral Tower tickets. And not many people will get her by any chance. So lots of Japanese players were using Yundin till they had a chance to get White Rose. That's why White Rose was even more important to them. And with Yundin, they were just using this character for just so how much time that getting access to an SS style was very good. They were just uh, having a character that was already maxed and getting another style with more status because it's an SS instead of an S would be very good. Uh, even better because uh, SS Styles has access to 6 LP instead of 5, so she will be able to perform one more healing. So if you use this Yundin to learn Water of Life, that means that she is a healer and damage dealer at the same time. That can make her be uh, one of the best characters right now. Now, you can compare her to White Rose and sometimes to Platinum version of Rock Bouquet. She's not so... Um, versatile in my opinion. She has some problems with AoE that we'll be discussing further, uh, but she's still very close to those characters. If we say the White Rose was like a 10 out of 10, we have a Platinum Rock Bouquet with a 9.5, SS Yundin is at least an 8.5 or 9.0 on a grade out of 10, in my opinion, because having an access to such a good spell with such a low 
coast. That will be useful in boss fights where uh, you can reduce the endurance from the enemy to increase your damage. The enemies that are way too cold, there will be even more and more enemies that are way too cold. Uh, that's diversity. Um, she will be able to heal as well. And when she doesn't have a character to heal, she can just debuff the, the, the endurance or use some uh, spell like Jagged Ice. It's very strong if you are planning on using this in a boss fight that has more than one enemy. Or just use Aqua Viper as well. And that it's for specific waves. You see that's a row of foes. Well, we were talking only about Ice Javelins. Because, well, it's her selling point. But her other choice of spells are a little interesting. Aqua Viper, you see, it's a facts row. It's critical against frogs. Has a 9 VP cost, can be reduced to 7. I wish this was only a 8 instead of 9, but in this game, spells cost uh, more than uh, skills. I don't know why. Uh, and it's just the case. Aqua Viper is strong, but it would be better if it had a, lo a lower BP cost. Especially because you will always be using Ice Javelins most of the time. And Jagged Ice is just for that moment where you are clearing waves or maybe doing Zwick Coliseum or some uh, Robin Cup in the future. Where you have uh, uh, this character ready to do overdrive against lots of enemies. And a 14 BP cost is not so good because, well, you see, we cannot get it to 10. She will never start the fight using Jagged Ice. But it's an average spell in my opinion. But her selling point is just using uh, Ice Javelins most of the time, and then using um, Water of Life for healing. She can also use a Squall that she can learn from her S or A style for AoE farming. But I have a specific video about using Yundin for AoE farming, because there are some problems with that. And it's too much to talk about. So you see, this is Yundin, her uh, sp uh, spells, and let's just check her abilities. They were... Um, change it for global. We had fired up 3, now we have fired up 4. Fighting Spirit 2, so she gets uh, more intelligence when she attacks instead of when she kills enemies. And very nice because that uh, happens all the time. She already has fired up. Uh, and the last one is called the Self Improvement. That is a curse sometimes. It's usually a blast, but can be a curse for AoE farming, and that I will explain later. It's just that uh, when you get a new BP, that mm, affects the choice of spells when you're running on auto. Because sometimes you have uh, uh, access to a spell that was off on high coast, and that can affect your choice of uh, spell on the next turn. It's usually a curse for auto farming. It's good for boss fights, but for auto farming it's not. The worst of the now is just that you cannot remove this. You cannot remove it, it will always be active. <laughs> I just hope one day we can remove some abilities from being active all the time. So this was Yundi. In my opinion, she's a very good character. Like I said, she would be a 9.0 out of 10 or 8.5 out of 10. If you were grading her on a skill of 10. Um, a very good character with a good selection of spells. And even better if you want to use her for farming, fighting boss and healing. Okay, so this was SS Yundi. Next one is Volcano. Volcano was also changed for global, at least his passives were. And let's check his selection of spells. He has Air Slash, that's a very unique spell, actually. Air Slash is a spell that deals slash damage. I thought this was supposed to be wind instead of fire, because Air Slash. Mm. And um, you see, 3 BP goes very cheap. Uh, it has a deep power because it has access to critical damage. Um, but being so cheap, that means that he can use it all the time. He can even reduce this to 2. That's amazing. But it's not considered a heat spell. You should only use this against enemies that are weak to slash. Okay, so I think it's an amazing, unique skill. And the second one is called a Magma Explosion that increases the BP goes to 9 already. And you see it's indirect single full. 9 power is not so bad. It's a spell of... Um, Second slot, because it can be awakened twice, reducing to 7. It's good for uh, single target damage. Uh, very good, actually. 9 BP, it's an uh, average cost for this type of spell. If it was a skill, it would be 8. And the last one is Wrecking of Fire. The Wrecking of Fire affects a cold enough foes. That's a little prohibitive, because most of the time you have to depend on the enemy formation. And can be reduced to 10. I do not suggest you doing so. Uh, I think this would be hardly used if ever. Uh, he can also inherit Firestorm from his other styles. And Firestorm starts with 11. You can awaken it once to reduce to 10. And then he can open with Firestorm and then use our Slash. 
But then I don't know if he's a good character for AoE farming at all, because he doesn't even have access to much AoE, and using Firestorm you just decrease his <laughs> BP to such a low level that you will only be using Air Slash. I think he's more about uh, challenges, where you can use either Slash or Fire damage, so he's a little more situational. Uh, even though you have some good uh, and unique choice of spells, this doesn't exactly tell you that he's is a character that should be used in, in all content. He's very specific. Okay, so let's just check his abilities. Clicking here on Style Details, Abilities. He has fired up 4. Uh, that was what was changed for Global. And he also got Fighting Spirit 2. That's the same as Yundi. Uh, that increases his own intelligence when he attacks. That's amazing because he gets more damage. And if he wants to keep using R Slash, that would be good. And just one thing that I forgot about is that Air Slash deals critical gets floating, and lots of enemies on this game flies. And everything that flies will do critical damage, and that will be increased. So, if you want to keep using Air Slash, that will be a good choice. Okay, so the last one is self-improvement, just like in the choice of uh, abilities. And when landing an attack, he can recover his whole BP. That is okay, especially if he's using Air Slash, he will be able to sometimes get two more BP to use maybe Magna Explosion. Yeah, he will stick around using single targets in like 90% of the time. That's Volcano, I think he's interesting, but I will give him a 6.5 out of 10 because even though he is unique, he doesn't have a wide use. You have to use him for some specific battles. But when he's good, he is good. And then we have Tatiana, and Tatiana is amazing. She feels like an SS style, uh, kinda covered up in a NES style. Let's click here on trial so we can discuss her. You see that she has Hasty Hammer. We'll be even be watching this attack because it's amazing. And Hasty Hammer is blunt damage with C power. Very nice. Uh, it's just like Smash, but a version with a club user. And they deals critical damage against human. That's interesting because usually when you have a critical damage, you have decreased power. She kept her C power got uh, critical damage against humans and can also inflict stun. That's amazing for a uh, Ness style. This skill is also unique to her. I never saw this, don't know if any other character in the future will learn as well. And then she has Bone Crusher and we all know how important this is. It's just like submission, uh, but a little less power because it's B power because of it being critical against Bone. It reduces the SCR from the enemy. That's amazing. We really need this because a lot of enemies deal Damage better than Nasty Art, most of them. <laughs> anyway, and well, she's exactly a jammer. We will be talking about her role as a jammer when sh we check her abilities. And the last one is Gong Ra Ringer. It's just like BR Crush. We have 12 BP with SS power, cannot get any better than this for a long time. These skills are the best ones to invest. You can even uh, get it to 10 with only two awakenings. You don't even need to do the third awakening, that's more costly. So Gong Ringer is an amazing skill for damage, but she's not exactly built for damage, so maybe you won't even need to use Gong Ring unless you are, say, using Overdrive. You, then you'll probably use Gong Ringer to increase the damage output. And then let's just click on Style Details, you see that she has an amazing, amazing source of skills for a jammer. She has... Uh, the only bad thing is this increases the amount of Auron received. I don't know why they give this... I don't know why, because she's not a farming unit. Uh, Enervate 2 for STR and agility makes her very comparable to Christmas Cat. Christmas Cat has the same things, but the, with the difference that the first skill reduces the, the enemy resistance against stun. Because Tatiana has a skill that can stun, maybe the two can work very well together, especially against enemies that uses martial arts skills, because they are affected by STR and Agility, and then you have to just debuff the two status. Debuffing the Agility will also guarantee that you won't miss your attacks. Depending, there are some bosses right now that I failed some attacks, so can be interesting. And, well, she uses Bone Crusher with Enervate 2, meaning that she can debuff the enemy two times on the same turn. Very awesome, and this is why I'm still using my Christmas cat till this point. And not only this, uh, Tatiana can also learn School Splitter, uh, is, oh, it is a school crusher. <laughs> there are skills with some similar names. From her Christmas style. If you got uh, a Tatiana from Christmas event, 
then you can learn this, this skill that will be amazing. So she will become a jammer that can decrease STR two times, she can also decrease agility, she can stun and can also decrease intelligence from the enemy. She will be a very good uh, helper on Bokon and maybe Dentark where you need those debuffs. Okay, so I really suggest you guys investing on your Tatiana. My Tatiana is already on style level 49. Just so you can <laughs> see how much I like this character. It's not because of the arts, it's just because of the kit. It's amazing, you really need the buffs on this game. And Tatiana will be a, like a 9 out of 10 on S style range. It's an amazing character. And then we have Mariah, and this... This is enough age styles, in my opinion, are like 99% only for inheritance. And Mariah has an S style, and then she gets this A style, maybe to inherit, um, to pass one skill to the S style. I don't know. She has Sweep, let's just click here on Trial. Sweep is a Pierce damage, uh, can stun as well, interesting. This is not a bad skill at all. And we have Aim. Aim is just average, but uh, it has a very cheap BP cost. Uh, because it doesn't have any effect. And the last one is Javelin, and Javelin is just damage as well. Uh, and that brings us to the question. We usually use S styles because of their effects. Why would we be uh, using an A style because of damage? They have a lower damage output because of lower status. So even though the, the skills are not so bad, they do not bring any effect. That would be the only reason why we'll be using an A style. And yeah, we have style details here, you can see that. Fighting Instinct, uh, when landing an attack, she has a chance to get increase STR, she increases style experience, maybe only use her during the event, and damage increases on full HP. Yeah, they are not so interesting. So this was the four new characters, now we need to talk about the last one. The last one is actually a free character. We have to go to the event and get him by exchanging the currency. And this character is actually very interesting for AoE farming. Yeah, let's just go here and click on Action. This is Heroic Prince Thomas. Uh, let's click here. Heroic Prince Thomas. He has access to Rapid Volley. That is a not so cheap cost skill. You see, 6 BP for E damage. And it's a Pierce. We don't have many AoE Pierce skills in this game. And can be interesting for some stages where the enemies are weak to Pierce. Rapid Volley can be used to spend because his second skill starts with 11 BP cost. So reducing Rapid Volley to 5 means that Prince Thomas will be able to use it 3 times on a fight, 3 waves, 3 Rapid Volleys to help you clear waves of enemies. That is interesting, Prince Thomas is an S style, you can easily get him to very high style levels because on this event we get lots of pieces for Prince Thomas and I do suggest you guys investing on him, especially because we have more status gains from him right now and Rapid Volley a AoE Spin will be a thing with another character as well, I think it's G. she also can be used for that um, but you have to farm her style, I think we are like two or three chapters away from that you have to farm, it's an SS style that you can get for story and you see, uh, Rapid Volley is good for farming, and then we have Rain of Arrows. Rain of Arrows is actually not so bad, it's just like Punishing Paul, but you have to awaken once to start with a 10 BP. He doesn't really need that, you have to just keep using Rapid Volley, in my opinion. And the last one is Multi Shot, that's an S power with 13 BP, I think it's a little more than it should, and not so special about it. I think he's only for uh, AoE farming, he even has this Star Pupil, passive that increases the style experience, so probably for AoE farming where you have to bring some characters to level up and they will be getting a little more style experience, that, nothing that really changes because 7% barely affects anything. And then he has hard defense, that uh, the damage will be reducing when he's on full HP. That's only for that situations where he fails to kill the enemies or you are using uh, other characters and they are still not enough to clear in one turn. And last one is weak point focus too, that weak attacks damage increases, that means that if he is attacking someone that's weak to pierce, he will do even more damage. That is usually very good buff for a character. Very good for pierce farming, uh, farming enemies that are weak to pierce. And that's it, I think this covers all the units for this event, I will be talking about the event on a separate video because these characters had a lot to talk about. And now for the important question, is this banner worth summoning for? Well, in my opinion, it's a very good banner. Um, it will depend if you have White Rose or the Platinum version of Rock Bouquet, because they are a good 
healers that can also deal damage. And SS Hyundin is the same. She's not exactly as good as White Rose or uh, have so much diversity as Platinum Rock Bouquet, but she can deal damage on a category that barely has any other competition. And Ice Javan is another very cheap, good spell that can also debuffs, and we don't have access to that many options like this in the future. Uh, Tatiana is also a very good character that you can use for challenges. She is even better if you have access to the Christmas version. We'll probably get the, the rerun of the Christmas event in the end of the, the year. And Tatiana also gets an SS style in the future. Volcano is good while not so impressive. And Mariah, we don't need to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, it will depend on, on your options. But uh, it's still a very good banner in my opinion. We will have some banners that are not limited in the future. And that uh, you can still save some gems for maybe half anniversary assholes in the future. Well, this was my opinion. Hope you enjoy it. Please subscribe if you still haven't. If you want to support this channel, you can do so by either using the Patreon, PayPal or Coffee links here in the description. Thank you for watching. We'll see each other on the next one. Bye.